guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I have a doll that I did in collaboration with a whole ton of other doll customizers on Instagram. Nine other doll customizers to be exact. We all did a doll inspired by an ice cream flavor, which is super stinking cute. So I highly recommend checking out all of the other dolls. But I did a doll inspired by Ubi flavored ice cream. And some of you guys may be like, girl, what the hell's an Ubi? What are you gonna learn today? And Ubi is the purple yam. And I know that's an interesting choice or an odd choice. Um, the reason why I chose Ubi flavored ice cream is because I wanted to do a purple doll and Ubi flavored ice cream is purple. But honestly, I really wanna try out some Ubi flavored ice cream because it sounds really good and it looks really cute. So that's where inspiration struck. For this repaint, I chose an Ever After High Crystal Winter doll. And I chose this doll because she has a pale purple skin tone that I thought I could emphasize with all the purple tones that she's going to be getting in her hair and her clothes and everything. And she also has a very like kind, smiling face mold, which I thought lended itself well to the theme for this doll. We start with the basics of cutting off all her hair and then putting her in a cup of boiling hot water to pop her head off. Once her head is all nice and popped off, I take a screwdriver and I scrape the inside of her head to get all the hair plugs out. Something unfortunate happened when I was getting all the hair plugs out for this doll, uh, her part split. So that sucks, but we're going to be fixing it in a second. To get the paint off her face, I use extra strength nail polish remover. All right, so we gotta fix that big old gaping hole in her head. And the most effective way that I've found to do that is to sew the doll's head back together. I've tried a couple of different methods like gluing, um, mainly just gluing. Gluing doesn't really hold though when you reroute, like it always ends up busting back open, which is really annoying. But sewing is, I mean, it's the most effective way that I've found to fix this problem. After some minor surgery on her head, she's as good as new. As I said earlier, I'm going to be rerouting this doll, so I had to paint her scalp. I painted it lavender with acrylic paint. For this doll, I'm going to be using Espion and Whisper from the Doll Planet. These are both nylon doll hair. I wanted to give her kind of like a highlighted effect to her hair, so that's why I used two different tones of purple. My rear tool is an X-Acto blade handle and a needle with the tippy top of the eye cut off. I just take a tiny bit of hair, I kind of bend it in half in my hand, and then I slide it into my rear tool and plunge it into the head. I normally start with the back of the hairline because I'm usually kind of rusty when it comes to rerouting. Like, I don't know. <laughs> when I first start, I like put way too much hair in a lot of the time and then I kind of get my groove with it. After about five hours and a whole lot of YouTube and Netflix later, I am finally done with rerouting. So I take some fabri glue and I just squeeze that kind of violently into the neck hole and let her dry for about a day. Once the glue is all nice and dry, I take some boiling hot water and I boil wash her hair. So this is so that the hair lays flat because normally when you reroute, it kind of like sticks up and looks crazy. After all of that, the doll is finally done being prepped and we can start her face up. So I spray her three times with Mr. Super Clear and then I get started. The first thing that I always start with is the eyes because I think they're the most important part of the face. Um, I sketch out her eyes and I kind of, her molded on eyes are kind of like long and interesting but strange in my opinion. So I made them a little bit less long.
I like my dolls to be very blushed or very flushed, I guess. So I add a lot of uh, pink to their face and I shade around the face with varying tones of purple. For my doll's lips, I normally go in with pastels as opposed to watercolor pencils because I like the softer look that it gives. At times when applying pastels, I'll grab for a Q-tip. This is so that I can get a more kind of dense, pigmented application of color because sometimes with brushes, it gives you a slight wash. Um, so the Q-tip really just like grabs a lot of pigment with the pastel, so I'll just grab that at times and kind of press on color. I really like the blushing on my dolls to be really blotchy and I feel like this brush is very instrumental in that. So it was once a nice brush and now it is not. It is very raggedy. Um, it was like an eyeliner brush um, that was kind of expensive, <laughs> but uh, it quickly like frayed and stuff. So yeah, it just applies the blush really blotchy and I like it. It's kind of crappy. I recommend going and finding yourself a kind of crappy blotchy uh, raggedy brush if you want some blotchy looking blushy cheeks. With a really light blue watercolor pencil, I add branch-like pencil marks around the eyes, the forehead, underneath the eyes, the temples, and this is to look like veins. I also add really light blue pastels around the forehead and just generally all around the face to make it look like the skin has more layers to it. I think I mentioned earlier that I've been trying to concentrate lately on making doll skin really look like skin. And I just really dig how this doll's skin turned out. I wanted her to have a very light monochromatic pale look about her. So I made her eyes a really light pink. For this doll's eyebrows, I was really inspired by the doll fairy's melodic doll's eyebrows. <laughs> Eyebrow inspiration. <laughs> but they were just really like wavy and long and I liked it.
Of course, we got to add copious amounts of Pearlex's Macro Pearl all over her face. If you guys are going to get one of those, get that one. It's so good. With a white pencil, I add highlights around the eyes. I'm basically adding like a highlight to each wrinkle that I put on her eyes. I like to add lots of wrinkles to my dolls. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is just a really important finishing step. It really makes me feel like the doll is like almost done at this point, And it's kind of exciting. With a dark purple watercolor pencil, I add irises to her eyes. I tap a bit of metallic red watercolor paint on top of the purple of her irises. Since this is an ice cream inspired doll, I wanted to add sprinkles to her face or like a sprinkle makeup design. So I put sprinkles, stars, hearts, all sorts of stuff just on the side of her face. I sketched it in at first with a blue watercolor pencil and then I went on top with pastel tones of acrylic paint. The last thing that we are doing for this face up is I am adding Vallejo gloss to her lips. This is actually one of my favorite face ups that I've done to date. I just really like how pleasant she looks. She looks really nice, like kind and inviting, and I really like her sort of monochromatic pale color scheme. To blush the body, I'm basically using the same tones that I used on her face. So pinks, purples, uh, blues, stuff like that. Since her tights didn't really go with the color scheme I was working with, I had to paint them purple with acrylic paint. I painted them purple and then I also went on top of it with a duochrome purple acrylic paint that I have. And I set everything with a matte varnish. I wanted to challenge myself with sewing so i bought one of dg requiem's dress patterns whenever i want to challenge myself with sewing i buy an etsy dress pattern because it's always kind of above my pay grade a little bit but um yeah i can't really share her pattern because it's not really my pattern to share i bought it from her but her dress patterns are always really easy to follow and they're fairly inexpensive so i will link it down below and i just recommend checking her out
So we're making a doll purse, an ice cream doll purse to be exact. So I sketched out the pattern that I'm going to be using. I added a seam allowance and there's two parts to this pattern. The first part is the ice cream part and then the comb part. I cut out two ice creams and two cones. Since my cone fabric isn't really the right color of a cone, we are going to painting the white fabric with acrylic paint. While we're at it, we're also going to be adding the details with acrylic paint. So I am shading in the ice cream with basically a black acrylic paint mixed together. And I'm just looking at reference for this. I recommend if you're gonna paint anything, look at reference. But once I'm done shading in the ice cream, I'm adding the waffle texture to the cone. So I'm first going in with the highlights and then we're going to be shading it with a deeper color. For the highlights on the ice cream, we are sort of speckling the paint on or stippling it on. So I'm just taking that light purple and I'm tapping it in certain areas to add highlights. Once that's all nice and dry, I sewed the cone together good side to good side, making sure to keep that opening in the top and then flipping it. Then I pinned the ice cream part to the top of the cone, so the bottom of the ice cream to the top of the cone, and sewed that together good side to good side. Making sure, again, to keep that opening in the top so that my purse can be functional. This is the finished sewing result, and might I say, I really like it, it's really cute. It looks like an ice cream cone. Since this is a purse, she needs a strap, so I took some purple ribbon, I took my Fabri-Tac glue, and I just glued the ribbon to the purse. Moving on to her headpiece. So I wanted her to have a little cute yam on her headpiece. So I had to make a little misshapen kind of oblong shape out of paper clay. I painted it a beigey yellow color. I also splattered it with browns and purples because yams are kind of speckly looking. And I gave it a little smiley face because um, it just looks like a yam, so I had to make it kind of cute looking. And there she is. She looks like a potato. I love her so much. <laughs> I bought a bag of like sugary sweets charms off of Amazon that I will link down below because I feel like it's very useful um, for doll customizing. I picked out a couple of the charms that I thought would be cool for her headpiece. 
And I made her headpiece out of like a little oblong, like oval shape of fabric that I sewed embroidery thread to the sides of so that I can tie it around her head. And then I hot glued the charms to her headpiece. I decided her headpiece needs sparkles because sparkles makes everything better. So I added some sparkles to her headpiece. Taking some paper clay, I wanted to make her like a little ice cream cone choker. So I took the paper clay and I made a little ice cream cone shape with it. For the choker, I'm using some more of this purple ribbon. I sewed clasps, clasps <laughs> to the sides of it. Um, and I took a little bit of Fabri-Tac glue, put that in the middle, and put my little ice cream cone right there. Boop. Right there. Boop. I thought sneakers would go pretty well with her dress, so I took these. I think these were Madeline Hatter sneakers that I had in like, my bag full of doll shoes. Um, but I painted in the details with acrylic paints. Now on to her hair. So I am horrendous at styling nylon doll hair. I don't know why I'm so bad at it. I think I'm also bad at rerouting. I don't know. I'm just way more comfortable with yarn. But I'm trying, y'all, with this nylon doll hair. I just like the look of it. I like the look of yarn too, honestly. But anyway, so I tried the straw method where you wrap the hair around a straw and then you wrap some tinfoil around the hair and like bobby pin it in place. And you do the hot to cold method where once you're done wrapping like a million straws around the hair, you dip the doll's hair from hot water to cold water just over and over again to set the curls in place. I know a lot of people just pour hot water like over the doll's head to set the hair in place. I can't do that. It makes me too nervous. I'm sorry. It just like pouring hot water on my artwork oh it makes me too nervous and i think that's probably why it never ends up turning out good with my curls like i think that's probably the issue After I heated up the plastic to put her head back on, um, basically the few curls that I had were not there anymore. <laughs> like straightened out, I, I don't know. So it was like a, a whole day's worth of work for like nothing. But you live and you learn. Overall, this is how she turned out and I am pretty happy with her. I think that Crystal Winter is a really like awesome base if you want to make a very like sweet kind looking character um, and I was pleasantly surprised by her and I just like how her accessories turned out I like her makeup on her face and I hope you guys like her too if you guys do doll customization I'd really recommend doing a like sweets themed or ice cream themed doll it's a really cute theme to work with and I feel like it's really inspiring 
I have some shots in this video of all of my Ever After High doll customs together because they are some of my favorites. I love Ever After High dolls so much. I think I like them more than Monster High, which is surprising because I feel like lots of people like Monster High over, over Ever After High, but they just make such cute doll bases, like such cute, sweet doll bases. Um, also, again, I have all of the other people in this collaboration linked down below if you want to check them out. I think that their dolls turned out really adorable, so I would recommend it. Um, and like this video if you like this video, subscribe, it makes me happy, and I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Bye!